The market has been showing some crazy movements lately. Back in April, the market jumped to record highs. Also with the S&P 500 extending the rally off the March 2020 lows of 84%. Fast forward to today, the recent market movements show a much different picture. Last week, the Dow Jones dropped 271 points while the S&P 500 declined 0.8%. The Nasdaq followed suit, declining 0.9%. With these developments in the market, you must be thinking about one question. Should I invest in stocks right now or wait for the market correction? So stick with us to the end of today and we'll talk about this. Hey guys, it's Patrick Kenny. Welcome back to the channel. Be sure to like and subscribe. It's great to have you here. Many investors face the dilemma of buying when the stock market is too high. They believe that once they park their money in the market, it can take a hit and drain their profit. So they ask themselves the question, what should I do? Is the market too high? We need to pull up some statistics reflecting the returns you may get if you invested during all time highs to get you out of this dilemma. The crucial thing here is to keep in mind time spent in the market. According to JP Morgan's market takeaways, if you invested in the S&P 500 on any random day since the start of 1988 and reinvested all dividends, your investment made money over the course of the next year 83% of the time. On average, your one year total return was plus 11.7%. Now, what do these figures look like if we only consider investments on days when the S&P 500 closed at an all time high? They're actually better. Your investment made money over the course of the next year 88% of the time, and your average total return was 14.6%. These facts simply negate the myth of not investing when the stock market is at an all-time high. Obviously, it's essential to dive into the returns and dive in when the market is bearish. But if you invested at any time, especially the high times, you actually have a better return. You would be surprised to learn that five-year cumulative returns after stock market corrections are lower than the five-year returns after the market climbs to a new high. Whether the market declined 10, 20, or 30%, the five-year cumulative return never outperformed the five-year cumulative return of 78.9% during all-time highs. This brings us to that golden question. Should you or can you time the market? To answer this question, we need to visit the pre-pandemic time. In 2019, the S&P 500 nearly touched 31.5% on a total return basis. This number is whopping three times the average market annualization since 1926. So considering all of the facts and figures, the stock market was at an extreme high, and the next stop for the market was in the downward direction, right? Well, wrong. The stocks continued to peak till February 19th, 2020, before crashing down minus 30% on March 23rd. However, this decline was short-lived. Despite the fears of COVID-19 looming around, the S&P 500 set 33 record highs, finishing the year with an 18.4% in total returns. In a span of two years, the index returned over 55%. That too, with the stocks returning to an all-time high. With this in mind, we must switch our focus to time spent in the market. Investing is a long-term game. And if you're looking to make quick gains in a shorter period, then history will probably be against you. Let's roll back to 2020. If you bought stocks during February 19th peak, it would have taken approximately six months to break even. And by the end of the year, your portfolio would have been up nearly 13%. If you still don't understand the concept of time spent in the market, let's roll further back to the 2008 financial crisis. If you invested in the S&P 500 during the peak October 11, 2007, it would have taken nearly four and a half years to recover your losses, and a year before the index would hit another new high in April of 2013. Your cumulative returns during these five and a half years would have been 14%. The bottom line is that no one can time the market, no one knows where the market is going and what it's gonna do next. But what you can do is keep investing despite the ups and downs. It is vital to observe the historical trends because that is the most reliable way to predict the market. The S&P 500 was created in 1957 and the market saw a loss of almost 11%. However, the stock price skyrocketed by over 43% the following year, backed by rising credit volumes and business profits. In 2008, the financial crisis drove one of the largest equity losses to date, but in 2009, Stocks climbed 27%, boosted by expectations of higher capital spending and demand as the economy recovered. The pattern here is the economic recovery. According to JP Morgan, 
The US economy is currently in recovery mode, which historically bodes well for risk asset returns. Furthermore, don't underestimate the power of Fed policy to support financial markets. As we mentioned above, we expect them to remain accommodative in the foreseeable future and in terms of the election uncertainty. We discussed last week why we see potential for markets to continue to grind higher regardless of the outcome. Markets can have bad weeks, months, and years, but the value of investments in the S&P 500 has risen over time. It may be prudent to adjust portfolio allocations to lean more heavily into areas of the market that stand to benefit in certain environments or pair back positions that have exposure to negative dynamics. Regardless, getting invested and staying invested is a simple step an individual can take towards growing their capital over time. This statement by JP Morgan summarizes everything we discussed in this video. So park your cash in the stock market or any other asset class and keep investing. However, investments must be backed by sound reasoning, logic, and research. Guys, it's been a wonderful video and I hope you got a lot out of it. Do me a favor, if you like videos just like this, click that like button. And of course, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. It's free and it helps me out. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. We'll see you soon.